Our gotcha goddess QQ. While she might be clumsy and she might be Fushuan's best friend, she's also better than Zila. So this is a really big win for us free-to-play players out there because a free-to-play character being better than a featured five-star is amazing. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how free-to-play players need to build their QQ, what QQ requires to be better than Zila, and finally, how she is better than Zila. So we'll be going over everything from her skills to best light cones, best team comps, and how she is better than Zila most importantly. So let's go ahead and talk about her skills first. There will be timestamps throughout the video if you don't care about this section here and you want to go see a certain section, feel free to click around and do that. There is an asterisk sign here. I don't think that QQ is better in every situation than Zila is. I just think she is more consistently better in different situations. I think you can put her in more teams than she works. There's your little tidbit if you watch this part of the video. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what she does. Well, hopping into her skill first, what this skill is going to be doing is basically allowing her to draw two J tiles. These J tiles are an essential part of her kit. We'll get into that in a second when we talk about the talent here. And every time she draws tiles, she'll be getting a damage increase. This can stack up to four times. This is super important because this is where most of your SP goes into, which is drawing the tiles. This is the main thing that her kit revolves around is drawing these tiles. But this does play into the talent. And what that does is when an ally's turn starts, QQ randomly draws one tile from three different suits and can hold the four tiles at one time. If QQ starts her turn with four tiles of the same suit, she consumes all tiles and and enters the hidden hand state. While in this state, QQ cannot use her skill again at the same time as she increases her attack by a certain percentage and her basic attack is enhanced. And this does make her very RNG because you have to keep drawing tiles to enter this hidden hand state because if you don't enter this state, you're not doing big damage. So let's go ahead and talk about what that attack does now. So at a normal basic attack, if you don't draw four tiles, she's doing damage to a single enemy. Ew, cringe, is very stinky damage. But when you actually get that hidden hand state, she will be going into her enhanced mode like I said she'll be doing an AOE attack equal to a over double the damage she would be doing from her standard basic attack and on top of this she hits adjacent enemies basically the same amount as her normal attack would so you're basically getting two normal attacks out and a supercharged normal attack into the middle it's an AOE attack really super good here this all does play in the ultimate as well because there are ways to play this properly and to actually you know make the most use out of her kit her ultimate what this does is basically deals damage to all enemies and she immediately gains gains all four J tiles of the same suit, meaning whenever it's her turn again, she immediately goes into that hidden hand state. And we'll talk about how to use this a little bit later in the video when we do our character showcase, but that's really it as far as she does for her abilities. Let's go ahead and talk about some of her traces now, starting off with her first bonus trace, which is tile battle. She will store one skill point when using a skill. This can happen one time per battle. Basically, at the very beginning of battle, you get one free skill point back. This makes her a little bit more SP efficient. Her E2 is super strong because this is going to be incredible increasing the effect of her skill by an extra 10%. So basically you're getting an extra 10% damage boost per stack. This is super, super big. This makes her do a lot bigger damage. And then finally, winning hand, QQ speed is increased by 10% one turn after using an enhanced basic attack. This right here can come in clutch if you don't have enough speed on your QQ, like I don't have enough speed on my QQ. This allows her to hit my 134 mark pretty easily. So this is really good for me personally, but you know, it depends on you. This can either be like really, really good for you if you don't have enough speed or you can't get enough speed, or it can be just be mediocre depending on what your circumstances are, right? As far as how I'd level up these skills, I would definitely level up the basic attack. I would level up the basic attack to max. This is uh, really key because this is the main thing you're dealing damage with. It's kind of like Dragon Danny where the main attack is coming from that enhanced basic attack because whenever you upgrade the skill, it does increase the amount of damage stacks that you get with her whenever you use the skill. So you're just getting more damage per stack. Number three would be the talent because the talent increases the attack she gets whenever she enters the hidden hand state, which is every single enhanced basic attack. And then finally would be the ultimate. This You can kind of save this one for last if I'm being honest with you and also the small nodes really do help out she has a lot of a small nodes that are for attack and she also has some small nodes for quantum damage bonus uh, really super good for those as well. But before hopping into the relics, you know, I was looking at my analytics and saw only 10% of you guys were actually subscribed. So it would really help the channel out if you could subscribe so you can get some cool build guides and some copium content. Yeah, you guys want copium content, right? You guys want someone to shit on, right? But yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. I'm sure QQ would too. She'll bless you with plus 10 gotcha luck. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about these relics now. All right, gamers. So hopping into what her best relic set is, is going to be four piece of the genius of the brilliant stars. Uh, this is just really clutch. It provides 10% extra quantum damage and also ignores 10% of defense just in general. So it's a 10% free defense shred that she's getting. And against quantum.
Quantum Weak enemy, she ignores another 10%. Defense Shred is a really, really good thing in this game. It is really powerful. So if you can get that with any character, it's probably worth your while getting it. Her second best in slot would probably be a two-piece of the Brilliant Stars, two-piece of the Musketeer. But that 10% Defense Shred is just so much more powerful. I would honestly just recommend going for four-piece of the Brilliant Stars if you can get it. I know that Guard of the Weathering Snow is there, so if you don't have Fushuan, then this is just kind of copium and you don't really need this but i do think overall it is worth farming this set out it, it's really really good as far as your planner set goes i mean it's pretty simple just run two piece renolent uh two piece renolent is going to provide you extra skill damage and basic attack damage skill damage really doesn't matter it's the basic attack damage that matters because that's where all of her damage comes from it's a 20 percent damage increase so long as you can get her up to a 70 percent crit rate Yes, that's what we're going to talk about next is the main stats, but I do want to talk about alternative sets you can run. Of course, you can run Space Station here, and you can run Salsado here. Uh, Salsado will increase our ultimate damage, which, you know, it can actually work out in your favor if you do do that. Just because of the fact you are getting damage bonuses so much anyways, uh, your ultimate damage is going to do pretty big damage. But overall, Runolin is the best set to run here. Now, talking about some of those main stats that you want to be running on your QQ, on the boot speed, you need her to reach at least 134 speed. At least that's what I would recommend. At least 134 speed on the boot. You could potentially run attack percent on the boot tier as well, but we'll talk about that when we talk about the team comps in a little bit. Hopping into the chest here, just running crit rate chest here. It's going to be very hard to get her up to a 70% crit rate threshold, so I do recommend running this crit rate chest here because this is going to be very useful as far as getting her up to that 70% crit rate threshold that you want to reach for your Runolin Arena. Rope, we're just going to be rocking an attack rope here. I think that's pretty simple just attack rope increase her attack more increase her damage more and then finally for the sphere is going to be quantum damage boost this is this going to be her best in slot here now as far as the subsets you want to be running i would recommend running speed attack percentage crit rate crit damage the same thing you would run on just about any other crit based dps unit in the game uh, i mean it's hard to get but that's like the thing you need to run for them right uh, so yeah, that's it as far as like the relics go for QQ. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, what is very important, her Eidolon. For her to output more damage than Zila, you're probably going to need at least E4. Uh, E6 is optimal. E6 is really, really, really good. It will allow for a much smoother team, but you do want this E4 here because this is essentially doubling your damage in certain situations. Basically, whenever you use a skill, there's a 24% fixed chance to activate a certain state. And in this state, what she does is she basically launches an, an extra enhanced basic attack. That means you're getting two attacks per turn. Really nice there. Uh, her E2 is basically going to give her one energy every time she draws a tile. And then her E1 is her ultimate is going to deal more damage. But E6 is a really big one because it allows for more SP generation. So every time you use an enhanced skill attack, you're getting one SP back. So you're basically refunded one SP every time. This can come out to be SP neutral as well or even SP positive depending on your luck with drawing the tiles. But this does help out a lot. So talking about her best in slot light cones now. Obviously the best in slot light cone for any iridition type character is going to be Before Dawn. Before Dawn's offering a crazy damage bonus and increased damage to skill and ultimate damage skill damage doesn't matter here at all and also increased follow-up attack damage this is the best option for any iridition character at all so when jing yuan's banner comes back around this will be out i know it's not out right now but if you're looking for a more free to play option um because there is a viable free to play option to run there is about an eight percent damage drop off though and that's going to be the seriousness of breakfast at an s5 if you have this thing at an s5 and you have all of your attack stacks up which means uh, you've defeated enemies. You're going to be getting around 8% less damage than you would get out of the S1 uh, before Dawn Light Cone. So this is also a very, very viable option if you have it. And then realistically, the last option you could run, which is technically her second best in slot, which is today is another peaceful day. This is the Battle Pass Light Cone, but this just gives you a free damage buff. It is super, super good. Uh, this right here is, is, is honestly really good. If you have the Battle Pass Light Cone, you have a QQ, I would recommend getting this. This is going to be her second best in slot. There's only about a 3 to 5% damage drop off if you have this at an S5. Yeah, so this Light Cone is pretty good for her if you can actually get it. Like I said, it gives her just a flat damage increase. It has no like prerequisites really other than whatever her max energy is. You don't have to be at that energy amount. You just have to have your max energy around that amount. Now talking about some teams that you could run her on. Uh, right now I'm running her on a team with Fushuan, Branya, and Silverwolf. I know, not very free to play friendly, very relatable, surely. 
But the reason I run her on this team is because, first of all, Fushuan's giving her a crit rate bonus, which she needs right now because her crit rate is not 70%. So I really need that the extra crit rate from Fushuan. Also, Silverwolf as well. Uh, Silverwolf is really just here to proc off debuffs on the enemy. I mean, she doesn't necessarily have to be here. As I'll show you in the damage comparisons in a second here, uh, she doesn't really make that much of a difference. You could replace her for Pela. Uh, also, Branya as well. Branya is here. Branya is really, really good for her. The reason Branya is so good for her is because Branya is able to advance forward her action and make her go again, especially with QQ being E6. This is basically letting her even generate an extra skill point every single round and just pop off with extra damage with QQ just every single round too, right? And also, this would alleviate you having to run so much speed on your QQ and allow you to go for attack boots instead of speed boots on her. Uh, really just up to you in that aspect here. Now, I just want to show you guys some theoretical damage comparisons here. Now, keep in mind, these are theoretical both for QQ and for Zila. Now, if we take a look at the first team I showed off with Silverwolf, Fushuan, Branya, and Zila, you'll see that the damage that Zila is doing is actually less than QQ's damage. She's doing less overall damage uh, because she's not getting buffed up. The, the big thing with Zila is her getting buffed. The more you buff Zila, the more you give to Zila, the more she'll give back to you also the ability for her to kill extra enemies on the field to cycle more to get more turns is really important for Zila as well and I think we can see that more when we swap silver wolf off for Pela you can see the damage increase goes up slightly for Zila this is because she's cycling a little bit more and she's able to you know just do more damage to the enemies this AoE defense down shred is really really nice it, it just helps a lot more with Zila's case now where we see the biggest jump in damage for Zila is that is on a hyper carry Zila team like I said the more you get Give her the more she'll give you. That's why swapping off Silverwolf for Ting Yun, her damage skyrockets, absolutely destroys QQ damage. But I think this is something that we can take note of here and actually look at as a positive for QQ. QQ is more consistently good across the board than Zila is with running less supports. I Meaning you can run less on a team with QQ and get more out of her than say with Zila, right? Zila needs a lot more on a team to actually skyrocket her damage. I'm not saying that Zila at her best and QQ at her best are the same at all. I do think Zila is better on a hyper carry team than QQ would be. But the point here is, is that you don't have to run a hyper carry team. You're allocating all of these extra supports to one team to make her skyrocket her damage. But what does that leave you for your other teams? Ting Yun is needed on most teams, right? Ting Yun is a, a best in slot in most teams. Dragon Danny team, Jing Liu team. Like, you could use those resources elsewhere, especially if you have your QQ. You're thinking about pulling for Zila in this coming up banner, depending on when you're watching this video anyways. If you already have Jing Liu and you already have Dragon Danny, then, I mean, you're probably going to be needing to use your team on that team. And in that case, your secondary team where you're having this character at your your I guess your quantum team if you're running like a mono quantum team then in most scenarios QQ is going to be a better option for you without having to go through the hassle of trying to get her now I will say this does come with that you need like at least E4 for this to even happen E6 is optimal this that's what you really need for her to pop off but at the end of the day she is still providing really good damage anyways let's go ahead and hop into a quick little character showcase so I can kind of show you how she works on a team and how you should really be playing your QQ to maximize your damage. Alright, so hopping into the battle here, I know, my team is not speed tuned at all. My Fushuan goes first in this team and it's very, very cringe, but first we're gonna go ahead and boost QQ up to the front. Oh, we got really lucky. We actually, we didn't have to draw a tile there. Okay, cool. Uh, this will only do like 21,000 damage. Keep in mind, you do need to be drawing tiles to get that damage buff. So that is something really important to keep in mind. Uh, the more tiles you draw, the more damage you're going to do. Okay, we'll actually get a better glimpse of what her damage is here. She drew two tiles, so she should have gotten two stacks of her damage boost. Yeah, so she got two stacks of 34% damage increase. Uh, let's see how much she's going to do now with two stacks. Bam! 29,000 we also froze the enemy as well. Very very cool there. We also have the ult. We're gonna be saving the ult for a second here actually. Uh, the reason we're saving this ult is because we want to be able to actually uh, do the most with our ability here. So th the reason I say that is I, I kind of wear that weird. But what you want to do is you want to be drawing now as many tiles as you can. And say we didn't get this tile here. We would basically use the ult and then get all of our tiles. But since we got the tiles. I will just go ahead and use our normal attack here. We did 55,000. We got an extra attack of 51,000. Then we'll be using our ult. Uh, and this is single target on the, on the enemy, by the way. That was like over 100,000 damage from like three skill points. So it's like 
like like very close to Dragon Danny levels. I'm not gonna say it's like Dragon Danny level. Like she gets there sometimes just because of RNG and stuff like that. And she's a very RNG dependent character. Now as you can see we have four stacks of here, so that means next time we won't have to use a skill point. Uh, but yeah, let's just see how this goes. Bang! Uh, that's an extra 28,000 damage. She's also doing AoE attacks on top of this as well, so a very, very clutch character. Let's go ahead and give her a damage boost. This will be the last kind of attack that we're going to do on her. I want to kind of full send this. We have, like, not that many tiles, but we have a good amount of skill points here. So let's kind of load her up with buffs now to see what she can do. Like I said, saving the ult is kind of important in certain situations. Don't just use it as soon as you get it. You kind of want to be saving it until you buff up 73k, 73,000 damage on that on that enhanced basic attack there against one enemy. Hey, it's huge. Really quick, we just want to go over the stats of that team there because that team is scuffed. This is my uh, this is my uh, QQ right now. We're rocking 63% crit rate. Of course, Fushuan helps bring us up. Our crit damage is at 156. Uh, and then of course we have the the speed at 132, which her trace does help us get up to uh, that we talked about earlier. This will help us get up to 134 speed. Uh, really comes in handy there. We're also running Fu Shuan as well. We don't have everything unlocked for Fu Shuan, unfortunately. Well, I don't really care. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, 137 speed though. Our Brawny is taking at 134 speed exactly. Uh, this this is so she can cycle twice and bring her back up to the front so she can get a second rotation in. We're also running her on Crave the Moon. Moon weave the clouds as you can see our crit damage is 160 it could be higher our relic set is scuffed and all over the place i don't even think we're activating keel right now let's see yeah only 25 percent we're not even activating keel here and if you want to look at her traces she only has a level five on her skill here a level six on her ult not very much there same story with silver wolf silver wolf is also very very scuffed she's running a break set uh, with 130 speed, so also down bad, but she is using the free-to-play light cone here. Anyways, gamers, that's going to do it for our little build guide today on QQ. Uh, this video is probably not going to come out the day I want it to come out, just because uh, I'm, I'm strapped for time right now. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, please watch the Do Not Summon and Summon video for Topaz if you haven't already, and subscribe to the channel too. We'll have a lot of Topaz content coming soon whenever she comes to the game, so I cannot wait because I love her so much. Anyways, bye guys. See you later.